And good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion for the first Sunday of Lent. This week, the Blackburn Diocese service from the is from the benefice of St. Luke's Slime with Hest and St. Alfred's Halton and St. Saviour's Afton. My name is Susan Seed and I'm rector of the three parishes which are situated just north of Lancaster. And today, as we begin Lent, we recall the 40 days Jesus spent in the desert, during which time he was tempted by the devil. Through prayer and fasting, he did not succumb to evil. And so we take a moment now as we prepare to worship this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And so we're going to begin with our first hymn, which is As We Are Gathered. Witness 
to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so now we have our readings. Our Old Testament reading is being read by Sunday from St. Saviour's, followed by our New Testament reading, read by Martin from St. Luke's. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to the end. For Christ also suffered for sins, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most of us faced many highs and lows in our lives. And this past year will certainly be remembered as a low time for many of us as we face the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Highs and lows are also reflected in the seasons of the church with the highs of Easter, Pentecost and Christmas, interspersed with the lower times of ordinary time, Advent and Lent. Now you might be wondering why I am delivering my sermon from the Vicarage Kitchen. That is because before I was ordained, I was a food technology teacher and I used to dread the beginning of Lent. And that was because the beginning of Lent meant pancakes. And every year as we approached Shrove Tuesday, the children would ask me, can we make pancakes, miss? Now, if you can imagine making pancakes with a class of 20 or more inexperienced children, getting the batter stuck to the pan, tossing pancakes onto the floor, or even worse, the ceiling, you will understand why I was less than enthusiastic. However, it did give me an opportunity to explain to the children why we eat pancakes on Shrove Tuesday and to talk about my Christian faith. I'd also explain why we give things up for Lent, usually chocolate in my case. And then they would take great delight in wafting everything they made with chocolate on under my nose in an effort to tempt me. So why do we eat pancakes on the last day before Lent begins? Well, the word shrove comes from the old English word shrive, meaning to absolve. On Shrove Tuesday, it was customary to make your confession and to be absolved by the priest. The custom of eating pancakes was originally intended as a way of using our eggs and butter before Ash Wednesday, when people began their days of fasting to commemorate Jesus' 40 days of fasting in the wilderness. And going back in time, only one meal a day would be eaten during Lent, with no meat, eggs or dairy foods being consumed at all. Nowadays, many people try to give up something for Lent, like sweets or chocolate or alcohol. And Lent was also traditionally a time of intensive preparation, with fasting, prayer and almsgiving by those who were going to be baptised at Easter. Nowadays Lent is a time of self-examination and prayer as we prepare ourselves for the great celebration of the resurrection of Jesus at Easter. It can be a time of spiritual growth as we enter more deeply into the mystery of Christ's passion and resurrection. And if we are to be involved with mission, then we have to be right with God in our own lives. And during our lives, we find 
that lows often follow highs. We find that after a big, exciting event, we experience times of depression and feeling low. And in our Gospel reading, we hear how Jesus experienced the high of being baptised and hearing the voice of his Father telling him that he is his beloved, with whom he is well pleased. And this is rapidly followed by the low of being driven into the wilderness, where Jesus is tempted by Satan for 40 days. And after this time of temptation, Jesus begins his public ministry of teaching, healing and preaching. Thus this time in the wilderness comes between Jesus' commissioning and his starting his time of mission. As we reflect on Jesus' experience, we can gain hope and strength because his is a ministry of human realities. The word temptation seems very negative, but the original Greek word actually means more like testing. And I believe that this time of testing in the wilderness was not a test of, on God's part to see if Jesus would fail, but rather a demonstration of the impossibility of failing. In the wilderness, there is nowhere to hide. Jesus is alone and at his weakest. Yet Jesus is victorious over the temptation of Satan. He emerges from this time of temptation affirmed and strengthened in preparation for his future ministry. And it's often when we are feeling most vulnerable and weak that we are tested. However, if we resist, we can emerge as stronger people and experience a time of spiritual growth. As Christians, we are called to take part in mission and continue the Spirit-led proclamation of the Gospel Lent is a time for us to confess our failures and redirect our steps towards Jesus. There are many practical things we can do to deepen our faith and learn more about how to build God's kingdom. Hopefully you might be taking part in a Lent course and taking extra time to read and pray during Lent. If you haven't done so already, do get hold of one of the copies of the Blackburn Diocese Reflections for Lent based on the Gospel of Mark. But going back to pancakes, perhaps we can think about how the ingredients we use to make pancakes could be used as symbols to guide us through Lent. So first of all, we have flour. Flour is what is used to bind the pancakes together and thicken them. And this reminds us of our need to come together to worship and build relationships with God and one another. Perhaps this Lent we can aim to spend more time joining in with worship. There's plenty to choose from online. We could also join in with a study group. Or we can set apart extra time for prayer and meditation. And then we have salt. Salt gives flavour to the pancakes. It has a very distinctive taste. And we need to remember that we need to live a life that is distinctive, where we share the love of God with those around us through our words and our actions. And then milk. Milk reminds us that we need to be nourished. Milk is that food that nourishes babies. And we need to be nourished by God's word through our reading of scripture. This Lent, we can spend that extra time each day reading the Bible and reflecting on God's Word. 
And then finally, we have eggs. Eggs are that reminder of new life, the life we receive when we let Jesus into our lives. The most important aspect of Lent is that it is a time when Christians can prepare to mark and celebrate the love of God shown to us through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus. It is a reality that we are experiencing testing times due to the pandemic. And it's natural to feel vulnerable and weak as we go through this low time in our lives. However, there is light and hope ahead. We have the wonderful rollout of the vaccine. And as we go through this wilderness time, we don't have to go through it on our own. We don't have to try to do it in our own strength. Instead, we can ask our Saviour Jesus, who has been tested in every way and didn't give up, to give us the power and the support that we need. We know that this is possible because, as we heard in our reading from 1 Peter, Jesus Christ has gone into heaven he is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities and powers subject to him. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so now we sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. God of second chances, open our eyes today. Help us to see you and to see ourselves as we truly are. What we are ashamed of, we offer to you. What we are pleased with, we offer to you. Everything that we are and everything you created us to be, we offer to you this day. Let today be made the first day again. Help us to see what has come and seen and hear what we have left. Unheard. Let the Spirit be upon us today and show us the path that we must take. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, forgive us for our sins, but forgive us as we forgive others. Help us to be accountable for our salvation, Lord, to show kindness as you have been kind to us, to touch with gentleness as you have been gentle to us to love with a blazing strength as you have always loved us. You have known us from the beginning in all our weaknesses and faults, and you know of all our potentials, how even the most violent hands could turn to heal, the most barren heart be moved to love. No life is over before you call its name home to you, so with every beat of our hearts, help us to take one step closer the best we can ever be, no matter what positions we are starting from. Let us know that with every admonishment there comes a promise. Life can be better from now. Help us to learn the path of forgiveness, Lord, and trust that it is not a thing created to shame us for doing wrong, but instead an instrument of love to remind us that with your grace we can still do right. Let us not be ashamed of ourselves, Lord, but instead embrace the fact that we are imperfect and never be afraid to bring our faults to you to correct. You are our Father, Lord. You created us and you stuck with us. You have offered us redemption and a chance to say sorry, 
to ease the harm that sins can leave behind. So forgive us now. We are sorry for all that we have done. Correct our paths, Lord. Let us live up to the potential you can see. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are your children, and your grace brings light to us always. It has not been an easy 12 months since our last Lent, but in our wilderness we have still found causes for joy. Many have struggled this last year with illness, pain, grief, or loneliness. Those with skills to help have been overwhelmed by an inability to save all, to help all. Those who have found themselves responsible for others' lives in a way like never before have struggled to comprehend that magnitude. But lives have still been saved. Laughter has still occurred. Friendships have still blossomed. Love has still been cemented in marriage. New life has still been created and born. There are miracles that happen every day, and although this year has been hard, and many lives we hope can stay longer have left us, our wilderness has not been barren. We pray for every life lost, for every person suffering with illness, for every grieving heart, and every struggling soul. We ask for peace and healing upon them all, but we also give thanks. We give thanks for the innovations and discoveries. We give thanks for the laughter, the smiles, the kindness seen. We give thanks for those moments in our days we may not always notice, but which remind us that life is indeed good to live. For those yet to know your grace, we pray with love. For those of us who know it, we rejoice. We give thanks. We give praise to you, our Lord, in love. For none are so lucky as us to have known you. We love you, we thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of second chances, for every drop of strength given to others, we thank you. For every hand that reached out and was held, we thank you. For every day we woke up still alive, we thank you. This day is not over. There are decisions to be made, burdens to be borne, and people to be loved. We can do not a bit well without you. Open our hearts to things we have been afraid of. Open our hands to people we have not reached for. Open our minds to understand what previously has confused us. And let us take the better path always, guided by you in your gracious mercy and our Saviour's shining light. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. The sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we prepare to share the peace together. And if you're watching online, you may want to make your own comment at this stage. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good. 
to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St Luke and St Wilfred and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. For our final blessing, we say together the diocesan vision prayer. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call to make us disciples, to be witnesses to grow leaders and inspire children and young people. Give us eyes to see your vision, ears to hear the prompting of your spirit, and courage to follow in the footsteps of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining with us this morning for our service. And so to the blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up the cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and all those that you pray for, today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.